In this video, we will write some tanks using the arcade mode, a top choice among players. We will talk about ground combat tactics, aiming, scoring hits, and many more seemingly simple things. However, these details are most often the difference between the victory and defeat. The arcade mode for ground combat, just as for the aviation, offers players a number of tips that help them get their bearings on the battlefield. We see the distance to each target, a special crosshairs that shows us where a shot would hit, and the chances of penetrating the armor protecting a given part of the target vehicle. Of course, both sides enjoy the same advantages on the battlefield. Enemies can shoot through trees and bushes to hit your tank without worrying about visibility or the damage they do, as your tank's outline will light up like a Christmas tree. The quality is fair play. All land-based vehicles await you in the Army tab. Right now, not all countries have tanks, so we'll pick the USA. Here we see multiple research trees. They are split into class branches – light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, and anti-aircraft vehicles. The first branch here is typified by the M2A4 light tank and several modifications of M3 Stewart. The second branch begins with the M2 medium tank. The third one is made up of heavy tanks, with one notable exception, the M4A3 Sherman. Finally, the fourth branch holds the anti-aircraft vehicles. Soon, we also expect some American self-propelled guns, or SPGs, to appear as the fifth branch. Aside from other branches, there is also a variety of premium vehicles available. These vehicles rake in Richard trophies in terms of experience and silver, and can only be bought with Golden Eagles, a special in-game currency that is bought with real money. At the very beginning, we only have one tank, a reserve one. Once we've decided which we want next, we click on the button below it marked Research. Now, the experience we gain in battle will be put toward that tank, eventually making it available for purchase. To figure out which tank works best for you, right-click any of them. The menu that opens up will show you the tank from different angles, its specifications, and even offers a test drive option. This is where you can also see the vehicle's future modifications. They strengthen your tank using the experience you earn in battle. Modifications are split into three groups – mobility, protection, and firepower. Jumping ahead, we recommend getting spare parts and fire extinguisher right off the bat. These let you repair some damage that you will inevitably sustain in combat and put out fires inside your tank. That will come in handy for sure. What you do next, however, is up to you. Let's get set for our first battle. For that, we need to assign tanks to available crews the same way we did with aviation. The assortment is limited at first, though it will expand very fast. That to battle button, it's the same whatever you do. Where it takes you, though, to the skies or on land, depends on what kind of game mode you chose before clicking it. Now we need the tank arcade option. Off we go. A short briefing shows you the map with the positions of friendlies and enemies, as well as the mission objectives. Note that they're usually a bit more complicated than kill them all. Teams that get caught up in the mindless firefights instead of taking care of the main objectives are almost guaranteed to lose. Load complete. Now we need to choose the tank in which we will fight until our first combat death. You have only three respawns in this mode, keep that in mind. Now we choose our ammunition. For simplicity's sake, you can simply max out the armor piercing shots, but for some tanks it's worth taking along a few high explosive shells. It all depends on the type of tank gun you have, but we'll talk about ammo particulars and how to use the different kinds in future videos. Here we are finally on the battlefield. What can we see from the interface? In the bottom right corner, there's a traditional mini-map that shows enemies in red, friendlies in blue, and strategic locations to be captured. On the left is a miniature model of your tank that is nice and undamaged, that won't last long though. Soon, you will be able to see which models are damaged. You can also check your current tank damage by pressing the I button. Your tank will be x-rayed and the indicators will show you what modules are working normally and what are completely destroyed. In the upper left corner is the improvised instrument panel. Tank speed, engine RPMs and the current gear are all displayed here, just like in a car with a manual transmission. The upper center of the screen has red and blue stripes showing score, just like in aerial battles. The red stripe has to disappear faster than the blue one to achieve victory for your team. A bit below are letters that signify strategic objectives you need to capture. You can see by their color which team currently holds them and is therefore one step closer to victory.
Let's take a minute to talk about how to drive. You probably have taken time to look over the tank's introductory lesson, if not, definitely do so before jumping into battle. Don't let your teammates down. It is also a rare chance to pick up some golden eagles without spending any real money. So, you already know that W, A, S and D keys are used to move around, while the turret is rotated with your mouse. Let's also add the Q and E keys, which are your gear shift. Give it a try, it's great for when you have a long road ahead of you. Also remember that many tanks in the game tend to skid rather hard, just like in real life. Be careful when turning and don't steer too hard when slowing down or you will give your opponent a clear shot at your least armored area, your rear. If you chose several types of ammunition at the beginning, you can switch between them using numeric keys in your keyboard such as 1, 2 and etc. There are no artillery vehicles in the game. On the other hand, some tanks can use the 5 key to call in artillery strikes on the enemy positions. You can earn it if you fight well and you can accumulate up to 3 such calls. It is possible to spend them all at once or one by one. The 6 key puts up the fire in a burning tank once you have researched the fire extinguisher. The other feature is an opportunity to get into the aircraft to fight by activating a mini-event. If you have destroyed two or three enemies, you can choose to get into the battle in a bomber or an attacker. Your teammates will have a chance to join you, but only in a fighter to defend your aircraft. The enemy pilots will try to destroy you though. But there's one thing you have to know. You will have approximately 44 seconds to fly, so do not hesitate to attack. The keys for these mini-events are 7, 8 and 9. You can also use machine guns mounted on some tanks. They're very effective against enemy planes and can also destroy some open-top vehicles by killing their crew. Just press the space button and shoot. If one of your teammates turned upside down, you can still help him get up. Ask your teammate to press the zero key, then aim at his tank and press the key again. Now you can see a tow wire that allows you to tow the tank where it can be safely repaired. This next thing may be perhaps the most important thing, looking around and firing. The large white circle shows where the camera is looking, while the small circle shows where your gun is pointed. The small crosshairs help you see where a shell would land, they fly along a ballistic trajectory of course. The color of the crosshairs tells you what the result of a shot would be. Green crosshairs mean you can shoot and your opponent will certainly suffer damage. Yellow crosshairs mean you have a 50% chance of piercing your opponent's armor. Red crosshairs mean there's no sense in taking the shot because you won't do any critical damage at all. War Thunder's damage model does not include any abstract hit point calculation. There's no such thing as hit points in the game. When you penetrate the armor, you can take out one of the opponent's modules, such as engine or suspension. Sometimes you can even wound or knock out a crew member. Enemy tanks are destroyed in one of the three situations. 1. When less than two crew members are alive. 2. When the vehicle burns down completely. And 3. When the fuel tank or ammo rack blows up. We recommend using the sniper scope when shooting that is accessed using the V key. It helps you aim at your opponent's critical areas, the driver's hatch, gun barrel and the tank's engine. You can also zoom in using the Z key or right mouse button. It's best to stop moving and take your time before shooting. Come to a stop, wait a second or two for your gun to stabilize, aim and only then take your shot. Of course, it's also better to fire from some cover so you don't make yourself a nice big target in return. In addition to human players, there are also computer-controlled tank and aircraft bots on the map. You do get points from taking them out too, but make sure that human players are your primary targets. Since bots don't have names, just look directly above a tank to see if it's one or not. Finally, let's look at a mistake everyone makes at the beginning so that you can avoid it. As much as you want to get involved in the action, don't just blindly throw yourself at the enemy. All you'll do is give him an easy kill and some price points. Instead, steadily capture points while taking positions that let you cover a large area. Don't forget about hiding either. Stay close to hills or rocks that you can hide behind. Be constantly ready for when your opponents show up on the battlefield, gun down impatient enemies and always stay mobile. This is no race. You don't have to be faster than everyone else. The idea is to win. The battle is over. Now you can research our first modifications. After you buy unlocked parts, you can level our crew up using the points you picked up during battle. There are five crew members. The driver, commander, gunner, loader and gunner slash radio operator. We recommend starting with vitality for your gunner and loader. 
They're the ones responsible for the weapon that can save your life and those of your teammates in tough spots. That is good enough to let you try out your first land battles in War Thunder now. See you in the war.